Hi everybody, it's me Maria with Nail Nation and Nail Nation 3000. Just wanted to do a quick tutorial on the Purple Halloween Spider Web Nail um, by request. And I'm going to show you really quickly what you'll need right now so you'll know. Um, it is several steps, but it's actually quite simple. And to start, you're going to need your base color. Now what I used was a dark purple that I actually frankened with, which is also a term used for mixing, um, spectra flare. So it gave it kind of a purple holographic color. That is not necessarily needed for this. Um, so if you just have sort of a shimmery, dark, dark purple, almost black, you could even use your base as just a really dark plum purple would work as well. You're going to use a base coat and you're going to polish your nails with the base color and you're going to let that dry completely. And then the next step, um, and this is something that you will need to find a substitute for, um, possibly a little bit of silver mixed with a small amount of white will give you a similar effect because this color is not um, an actual color you can buy, but you may have something that's similar to this. This is just a Spectra Flare um, thick colored top coat that I made. And I used Funky Fingers Riot for my purple sponging. And for the pink sponging, I used Twisted Pink by Sally Hansen's Extreme Wear. And then for some of the spiders and um, a little bit of sponging, I used the OPI DS Radiance and there is a very close duplicate to this which is the Sally Hansen Extreme Wear City Girl. I used white stamping special polish by Conad. However, the white on white by Sally Hansen's is also very good and you'll need black or black stamping polish as well. And I just used this too just to save a little bit of time for drying. You'll need a plate or a palette of some sort, um, preferably a paper plate if you're using plates, don't use, or porcelain, don't use foam, the polish will eat through it. You'll need some sort of sponge like this, and this is actually like really cheap kitchen sponge. It's the soft kind though, not the coarse kind. And of course you'll need a scraper and stamper for your plates. And the plates I used, the web is Bundle Monster BM13. And the spider that I used was Conad M1. And I do have several spider plates, but um, I just really like the way this one looked for this purpose. So we're going to go ahead now and start the stamping process. And I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. And then we will go to the next step. I will skip through, you know, each nail. I'll just do a couple of nails for you. So I took a little bit of purple and a little bit of my hollow top coat, which you can substitute this. Again, it does not necessarily have to be the hollow top coat. And you just take the sponge like this and go over, make them overlap and go over both like this. And go at an angle from the right side of your nail and go inward just like that and you're not going to cover the whole nail you're just going to go about halfway doesn't need to be perfect um, just enough to kind of give you that splash of color and it's okay if your hollow or your silver you're using doesn't really show a whole lot in this first step because you're going to do it again with the pink and see it doesn't take a whole lot of polish to get that step Next step in. is going to be to stamp a little bit of pink in with a little bit more of the hollow or your silver, whatever you might be using. And you just want to do it on the opposite side that you did with the purple. You can take the same sponge um, and just very gently trim off that first part there that's saturated with the polish. And you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna go over it and just very, very gently. Don't try to cover an entire surface. You're just wanting to accent. So you're gonna go just like this. And you see how it just gives it a little pink. 
and you're not going to make as big a mess on your skin. And for those of you who tend to make a big mess when you do this, um, try putting cuticle oil heavily around your cuticles and the sidewalls of your nail, all in this area here, um, prior to your stamping and it will make the cleanup much easier and that's very similar to what we do with the water marbling. And if you run out, you can just add a little more. Don't try to, again, cover. You're just wanting to sort of splash. This does not need to look like it's full coverage because you're gonna stamp over this anyway. And if you feel that you don't have quite enough brightness in the pink, take a little bit of the polish Get it on the corner and just at an angle, dollop it on over just the pink area, just a little bit to give you more pink and it will look like this. And your next step will be to start your stamping process. So you just simply need to let this dry completely and then you're going to stamp your patterns over it. So I'm gonna show you that next. Okay, now that your base has dried, um, you wanna go in and do the stamp with the spider web. So there's a couple things you wanna have ready whenever you're doing any stamping project. One is as lint-free as possible or gauze. I really recommend the gauze squares because um, they really are completely lint-free. Um, saturated in polish remover and that's to clean your plate your blade and your stamping um pad a dry one because you really need to dry that surface off after cleaning it because um, that really does affect the stamp if it gets liquidy or deteriorates from the remover and a q-tip with polish remover on one end and none on the other and that's to clean up around your edges and this is what we're starting with we're going to go with this one right here and we're gonna use the white, and even though you clean them before you put them away, it's always a good idea to wipe them down and clean them again before you stamp, especially with these fine prints this way. And you're gonna take your white polish or your special polish, and you want to put a nice, heavy, layer. Don't be real thin with it because it's better to, to use a little extra polish than to not have enough. So then you're going to go straight across it and you're going to take it in the right hand corner angled this way and you're going to roll it across and it's going to look something like this. And you can also, if you have polish from your sponging or a little bit of stamping, you just take the remover and clean it off around here. And you're just gonna go ahead and do this to all five fingernails. And take your time with this, ladies, because it's really better to just get a better result than it is to try to rush um, the stamping process and you're just going to keep repeating that and it's okay if they're a little off center and say for example you do this where you want to have a little more here on this edge it doesn't have to line up perfectly um, but what you can do is get a partial imprint of your stamp like this and then use your remover and your q-tip and take part of it off and then just gently stamp it over and you can kind of cover that end up like that and it's gonna look like this so then you just want to clean this off and your stamping pad and we're gonna go ahead and put your spiders on and you want to make sure too that between you get that excess polish off of your blade so you're gonna take your black polish or your black special polish your bundle monster plate M1 which we're gonna use this spider right here 
or your spider plate, whatever plate you may have that has the spider of choice on there, doesn't necessarily have to be the Conad plate or even this Conad plate. There are a couple with spiders on them. And you're going to take this and you're going to put one black spider facing different directions on each nail. The thumb, you might put an extra one. Make sure that it's kind of on the web so that it shows up a little better. And then we're just going to repeat that process with the silver. And again, this is just a few steps. It's not really going to be very time consuming once you get the hang of it. And again, you want to clean your blade. Now we're going to take our silver and we're going to repeat that process. So we're simply adding an extra spider in silver. And these you want to kind of come up on the purple so that you can see them better. And I am going to put an extra one on my thumb because it's a larger nail and I just want to have that extra coverage. And you can even add a third color if you like. To this, it does not have to be exactly the same. They will look like this. And my nails are much shorter than the original picture you're gonna see. I'm gonna show you this picture in a still shot as well um, because I wanted to show you that you can do this on really short nails they do as not well. have to be long. So what I used to cause the smoking effect at the bottom of my nail around here was Spectra Flare powder. Um, I have a baggie of Spectra Flare powder and as some of you may know, this stuff is kind of expensive um, and I noticed that there's quite a bit of it that's just attached to the inside of the bag that it came in. And, and it doesn't seem like a lot at a glance, but that's actually a ton of powder in there. So I got the idea of what could I do with this powder and how could I, how could I use it? Now you can use a silvery um, or slightly shimmered silver eyeshadow and you, can, you should be able to do the same thing. So what I did was I took a Q-tip and put a tiny tad of remover on it just so that it would give it some cling and then I squeezed all of the remaining remover out of it and I rubbed the lining of my bag. Now for you, if you're using eyeshadow, you're just going to gently roll this across your palette of your eyeshadow. And what you want to do is kind of saturate the Q-tip like this. And you're going to take it and you're going to just gently dollop at an angle, kind of going around and sort of streak a little bit of it up into the area where the spiders are not at. And you're just going to rub across up the outside left side of your nail and around. So you're going to kind of sneak around where your spiders are and it doesn't need to go all the way up into the nail, just into that corner and off to the side. And each nail is going to have a little more or a little less depending on how much picks up. And it's going to look like this. And then you're just going to clean up your sides and edges with a Q-tip and some remover. And the powder, if you use Spectra Flare or if you use your eyeshadows, these are going to come off real easy this way. It's not going to be a difficult cleanup. And if you're already using a little cuticle oil um, for your sponging, um, it's really not going to stick to you at all. So then you're going to have this and you just simply add two coats of your favorite top coat. And of course, I like to use Sesh Feet because it makes everything more vibrant, especially if you're using things like Spectra Flare or eyeshadow um, as a